there's a relatively new trend from camera companies where they come up with these big firmware updates for existing products. And I'm a big fan of this because it makes a product you already have feel like a bit of a new one when you get these big updates. And today we've got a really cool update for the DJI Air 3 and the Mini 4 Pro drones from DJI. And this adds a bunch of features which I personally have been waiting quite a while for. So today I'm going to test those out, I'm going to show you how to use them, and I'm excited to see what is new with these drones. So we're on our way to one of my favorite beaches to test out the new firmware update. But what I want to do on the way there is actually get some tracking shots of the car while we're driving on this road. Can I hold the sticks down together at the bottom? And now push up on the stick. So let go of that one and push up on that. Push up even more. Even more, even more. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now you can see it's actually picked up the car because there's a little plus on the car right there. So all you need to do is tap on that plus. And now it's picked up the car, so now I'll go to point of interest and now I'll click go. Okay, so now we're driving the car and it looks like it's still tracking, which is pretty good. How does it look? It looks pretty good. Just tell me if it loses the car. Okay. And you're basically flying the drone now, so it's doing my job for you. <laughs> <laughs> When you're filming on a bumpy road like this, it's like particularly difficult because when you're bumping, your, your fingers are moving with the car and it's so difficult to get a smooth turn like this. So if it works, then it's actually something I would use in the future for sure. So now I know you don't know what the sticks actually really do, but move the right stick forward and you'll see the drone will drive forward. What it should do is actually keep the car perfectly in the center of the frame, no matter what you do with the sticks. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. And now you can go up on the left stick, so we rise in altitude. And look at that. <laughs> okay, now lower on the left stick, and then the drone should point up and look at the car. So we're at one of my favorite beaches in South Africa now, and the weather's not too great. <laughs> But I'm going to do what I can to get good shots and test the drone. And just by the way, all of those shots with the car were done by Steph. I only took over the controller right at the end to land. And she has literally never flown a drone before. So it would be a good test to see how easy it is for someone who's never flown a drone before to pick it up and try and get some cool shots. I just want to mention, I know the video feed from the drone is glitchy, but I've been told by DJI that that will be 100% fixed by the time this update comes out, and it's just because it's beta firmware. So something that's new, but not something I would normally ever use is, you can now do spherical panoramas with the telephoto lens, and I think because it's a tele lens, it's actually going to give you better resolution overall, so I might as well take a shot now and see what it looks like. It's going for 137 shots. So the panorama didn't stitch in the drone, which is either something I forgot to select or it's not available in this beta firmware. But I used the trial version of this software, which has a ton of watermarks, but you can still see the panorama and the detail is really impressive. So as you can see, if we zoom in, there is a massive amount of detail. So if you're into making panoramas like this, then using that tele lens with the 137 photos is really going to get you the best quality spherical panorama. And I actually think it's pretty cool. You can see there's me over there and there's Steph with the dogs. <laughs> so now I'm going to test the feature that I'm most excited for in this firmware update and that's the Vision Assist. Now this first came to DJI drones with the Mavic 3 and in case you don't know what it is, now in the bottom left corner of the screen we have a live preview from the obstacle avoidance cameras on the drone and this is actually going to switch between left right forward and back depending on which way you're flying so it's going to automatically switch for you and it basically just gives you another viewpoint or fpv view for you to see what is in front of the drone in the direction that you're flying 
Now, from right off the bat, it is looking quite high up into the sky. I prefer if it was a bit lower. I don't know if this is a limitation of the camera or if they'll change this in a firmware update. But for now, let's test it as is. And what you can do is switch between this mode and your compass view and lastly your satellite view by swiping left and right on the actual little screen in the corner there. And of course you can make this bigger and smaller if you want to switch between them but for now we're going to keep it nice and small in the corner. And I'm going to do a forward flight shot with a top down view so I'm going to look straight at the sand and I know this isn't the best shot but it'll be a good test of the drone and what I'm gonna do is fly close to the sand dune now and I'm gonna only use the vision assist to check that I'm not too close to the sand dune and I'm gonna fly right over it nice and low and you can see I'm definitely not gonna hit it and this is something that would have been impossible to do in the past just because when you're looking straight down you can't look in front of you so that's a really nice useful feature to have and I'm not in a very crowded place now there's no trees or anything or cell phone towers that I could hit but you'll get the idea of how this could be useful when you're flying in everyday life and now one of my favorite shots to do is actually an orbital shot and with these it's pretty frustrating because when you're flying sideways obviously you can't see what's in front of you and with this feature you're actually going to be able to see now what is in front of you while doing these orbital shots because in the past what I would do is always look to the direction I was going to fly with the main camera check that there was nothing there and then do the orbital shot and now what I'm going to do with this as well is I'm going to switch to the tele lens which of course this mode works in as well and now I'm gonna do my orbital shot and for this shot in particular with the tele lens you lose a lot of your ability to see your surroundings so having the vision assist is gonna be really helpful especially for that so now I'm just gonna do this orbital tracking shot of me here and I can see from the live view camera the vision assist that I am nowhere near any obstacles and if you're in a place that you've never flown before, this is gonna be particularly useful because you don't know your surroundings yet. But from that live view camera, I can see that there is nothing in my way and I can just carry on with my orbital shot. This is a really useful feature, I'm not gonna lie. And now we're coming to that tall hill, but I can see it there. I can see I need to gain a bit of altitude to clear it. And there we go, we got the shot. And I'm gonna make it full screen now so you can see exactly the view you're gonna get. And obviously it's not gonna be the highest resolution and it's in black and white, but it's honestly there just for that extra little bit of protection for you to know that you're not gonna hit anything. And now I switch to forward flight and it's gonna switch to that camera. Now I switch to right hand flight and it's gonna switch to that camera. And now I'm going to test the last feature on the list, which is the auto active track. Now we did try and enable this on the car, but it said that it'll only work for people. So that's what we're going to do now. And I don't really know what it does, but apparently it basically just flies the drone for you and gets really cool shots. So let's see what it can do. Okay, so now I'm going to just tap plus on Steph and it should track her. And now I'm going to go active track, auto, start recording and go and now you can go so I'm not really sure what it's gonna do exactly here but let's find out so far it looks like we've got just a nice tracking shot of her running through there oh now it's switching to a helix okay that's pretty cool and it's doing okay it's doing a follow shot and we're definitely approaching a dune there so I hope the obstacle avoidance picks it up and it is, wow, this is quite cool. Okay, now we're switching to a drone -y shot. So it's gonna pull out. And hopefully we see the dogs following her there. Nice, and I'm not doing anything by the way. The drone is doing this all on its own. And <laughs> to be honest, I'm quite impressed. This is something I would probably do myself if I was 
following her and trying to get like a dynamic or shot or like different moves or whatever and now it's going in front of her and again I am not doing anything here it is doing this all on its own now we're doing a helix shot that is flipping cool I am not gonna lie Every time I use a drone, I realize that they're closer and closer to taking my job over entirely. So thank you, DJI. Really appreciate it, guys. <laughs> okay, so Steph is back now. She's a bit tired. So I'm going to give her the controller and tell the drone to track me. And we'll see how it does with the tele lens. So the last feature that I forgot to mention is one that's really important for someone like me who does a lot of flying on boats and yachts. And the reason is this is how I normally have to land the drone on a yacht. Flying with one hand on one stick, you gotta grab the drone and flip it over. And as you can see, that's quite an uncomfortable thing to do. So what we are finally able to do now is turn off the vision assistance on the bottom of the drone and bring the drone into a landing really quickly without it doing that little final check it does when it hovers above the ground. Anyways, those are all the new features from the new firmware update that you can download now. And if you're looking at picking up a Mini 4 Pro or a DJI Air 3, there's obviously never been a better time. So I'll put a link to the latest pricing in the description below. Otherwise, I will see you in the next one.